Hey, and welcome to another episode of Playful Strategy Weekly. I'm Willem van der Horst, a brand and marketing strategist, and I specialize in what I call playful strategy. So in each one of those episodes, we're going to go through and dig in all the things I study and read about play. And in this series of episodes, we are going through the beginning of the definition of play as defined as an activity by sociologist Roger Caillois in Man, Play and Games. And we went through the first two points, which were about play is freely engaged in and play is separate. And third is play is uncertain. It's an uncertain activity. So meaning an activity, the course of which cannot be determined, nor the result attained beforehand and some latitude for innovations being left to the player's initiative. As in every video, I'm going to illustrate this with two points and link to other videos on YouTube that are going to be related to brands, but not only sometimes business, sometimes brands, sometimes image, sometimes psychology. Here I have two examples. The first one of which I thought, uh, of course, we think uncertain, we might think gambling, but I didn't want to go in that direction. It's a little bit too simple. Uh, I wanted to go and I, I remembered this thing that Heineken did in 2013, 14, something like that. It's a little bit older, but it's a fantastic example of adding play to a marketing activity. And it was called the Heineken Departure Roulette. And they set up this installation in an airport, uh, an international airport. And any they picked up, I mean, they stopped passengers who were on their way to check in and they were all the had all their bags packed and everything else and they were like the offer was there's this big board with a randomized grid you can either go on the vacation you have planned or on the trip you have planned or stop now push this big red button and you're going to have a random destination and heineken's going to pay for your whole trip if you're willing to go somewhere you don't know where you're going to go yet and you're changing all your plans at the last minute so clearly a playful use of brand strategy and expressing a brand strategy through complete uncertainty. And the video is, you know, puts a smile on my face. It's quite happy. It was a really good idea. It's a lot of fun. So definitely worthwhile and worth checking out. Second illustration, this is more of a, rather than a specific example, something that I thought is a bit of a pitfall for a lot of ads for a lot of adverts and for a lot of brands and for a lot of creative executions when we go into big films. Uh, so the example I've chosen is not necessarily bad per se, but I thought it illustrates well enough and it's recent enough. There's a lot of examples of what I'm going to talk about. And what I'm going to talk about is a trope I've seen arguably way too often of a very big idea of a film for an advert so a big commercial that's probably going to last like one or two minutes, okay? But it's going to be truncated probably in 30 seconds for TV. But the one or two minute version, and this I've seen this in a lot of concepts coming from advertising agencies as well as finished products. Uh, the idea is you want to do a whole story with a beginning, middle, and, and a big twist. It's so that you don't really know where it's going. The outcome is uncertain and you, there's a big twist at the end. The twist might be, oh my God, this was from brand X all along or I really didn't see this coming. And sometimes it's amazing, sometimes less so because it's like kind of over, of an overused trope. But a lot of the danger is, it, even though you want to tell a great story, you only have a minute to tell it, it is still a commercial and you either lose the thing, the brand or the object or the service you're trying to sell and it doesn't come across very clearly. Or the other aspect is that it's not that interesting in the end. You're not ultimately making a TV show for Netflix. And so the payoff is not that big for the people watching. And it might still work if the audience is captive, meaning they're watching something on TV or they're at the cinema and they're for a large amount of the people that are there, they have to watch the ad. But more and more people don't watch ads or they skip through them or they go and do something else or they're looking at their phones. So... It's a lot, or or the one minute one is going to be truncated down to 30 seconds for TV or down to 15 seconds. So not everybody's going to see the full story or get what the twist was. So it's very arguable. The example that I've used here was the Soda Stream uh, Super Bowl 2020. So this year's Super Bowl ad, uh, Discovering Water on Mars. So you can go and watch and get the twist. It's, you know, it's not a bad ad. It's perfectly fine. I think it kind of illustrates that. It's an okay payoff. It's not that extraordinary in the end, but if you have to truncate that down to 30 seconds, it doesn't become as great. Or if you want, you have to choose between selling the product and having the payoff. Uh, I think that, you know, this is entirely debatable. You can debate this in the comments. Uh, give it a like or a dislike. If you don't like the video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very subscribe and I'll see you very soon for another episode. Thanks for watching.